Hello and welcome to the EcoSend podcast, a weekly podcast on becoming a climate conscious business. Every week, we'll be interviewing founders, marketers, and leaders who are championing the climate. The podcast is hosted by myself, James Gill, co-founder and CEO of GoSquared and the makers of EcoSend. If you run a business or are responsible for growing one, and you want to have a positive impact on the environment, then listen on. Every episode, our goal is for you to learn something and be inspired to take some action. Every single one of us making small changes and some large changes will add up. We're all in this together. So let's get on with the show. Thanks so much for listening. Now let's meet today's guest. Hi there, welcome to another episode of the EcoSend podcast. Uh, The EcoSend podcast is a weekly show where I speak to uh, people involved uh, and interested in the world of climate. And uh, it's at the intersection of business and climate where people are building businesses with uh, a view to making the planet a little bit better. Um, Each week I speak to someone who is always interesting, fascinating, inspiring to uh, help us on our journey to becoming a more climate conscious business. Um, And every week, uh, the show comes out on all major podcast platforms. Thank you for listening to series one. Uh, We've had a fantastic response to the first series, and we're now well into series two. And uh, in this episode, I'm incredibly excited to be joined by Dan Sherrod Smith, who uh, was on the founding team and previously built product at a company called Look After My Bills. Uh, They were a Y Combinator backed business and helped customers uh, automatically switch energy providers. Now, Dan is is the founder and CEO of Mothertree, which calculates your money's carbon footprint and helps you switch to a greener solution for free. I'm incredibly excited to have Dan on the show. Sounds like the perfect guest. So hello, Dan. How are you doing? Good to have you with us. Hi, James. Great to uh, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. It's it's great. I, I'm so excited to d- dive into some of these topics and uh, and hear a lot more. Um, so before we go too much further, um, tell me about what you're up to and how you've gotten to this point. What's your journey to where you are today been like? Yeah, that's... Uh, that's a great question so um i uh where to start i started at over energy on their grad scheme got to work in a bunch of different departments uh for marketing to customer service and ended up launching um over communities which was local generation so local employment local generation built on over's infrastructure loved the kind of entrepreneurial aspect of that uh and left and then left Ovo to to launch my own social business, which was connecting um, volunteers with elderly people in their area. Um, didn't hit the impact that I wanted, and learned learned a bunch of stuff about uh, sort of how to how to not run a business. I think, uh, but was headhunted by the founders of what was then called the Big Deal, and became Look After My Bills. And I think they liked that kind of aspect that I'd worked in energy, and I'd also had this kind of entrepreneurial experience. And they said, look, we've got this idea for auto switching people's energy bills, but um, we need someone to go and sort of figure out how to make all of that work. And so they brought me in for the first six months. I I ran that on my own. Um, so figuring out, you know, do customers pay us or is it suppliers? Um, <laughs> Small questions. Like, Small questions yeah, like that. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, kinda, I love those kind of questions. <laughs> I think that's so much fun to, to answer. Uh First 300 customers had my mobile number. So literally any <laughs> product uh, I, I found out about and, and could not escape, which I think is really crucial. Um, and, and on those efforts, we we got into Y Combinator. Uh, the founders went on Dragon's Den the following year and smashed it out the park. We wow. went from 10,000 to 50,000 customers overnight because of Dragon's Den. Wow. <laughs> And ultimately, look after my bills grew to to eight hundred thousand customers, and just had a really kind of amazing three years rocket ship journey. Uh, and very very lucky. It meant when I sort of stepped away, I had a chance to think, well, what what do I want to do next? And I knew the next thing was going to be how can I contribute uh, in a positive way to the to the climate um, crisis. 
but I didn't mm. know exactly what that meant. Sure. And so in um, sort of October 2021, I launched the Climate Challenge. So the Climate okay. Challenge was uh, basically a way for people to to discover ways to live more sustainably. So we right. went the day, we got rid of single-use plastic, we looked at our carbon footprint. And the thing that people kind of got pretty shocked by and took action on was when we found out what our banks were doing with our money and okay. what our providers were doing with our money. And I thought, well, this is just really interesting. And the more I researched into those two aspects, the more I realized how much influence each of us have in terms of what we fund yeah uh, sure. what we fund now is like a slightly glib but what we fund now is what we're gonna get in the next five to ten years yeah and so i built i built a uh, mother tree so mother tree is a, a money carbon calculator so there's lots okay. of carbon calculators out there that'll show you the impact of your diet and your you know your flights etc nobody's showing you what your money's doing uh, and that's why I built Mother Tree. So we <laughs> show you the carbon impact of your of your bank and your pension provider. So if you have okay. five thousand pounds in a in a current account with Barclays, that equates yep. to about ton and a half of carbon per, per year. Um, Interesting, crikey! Quite, okay, uh, wow. Yeah, that's, this uh, this that's is. Cool. Uh, yeah. This is actually fascinating. Okay, so I've got so many questions on that. I, before I dive into that, um, you said when leaving and then figuring out what to do next, you decided to kind of start with the climate challenge. What got you, like, what made you interested in, you know, I guess a lot of people have an interest in the climate, but it takes something else to really go and say, I'm going to start an, an endeavor, a venture of some sort what what was the what was the build up to that was it just you woke up and thought i want to do something in this space or you know was it a purely uh business decision or was there was there things in your personal life that made you want to dedicate more time to this yeah there's three things that uh made me want to dedicate more time yeah the first is um my son was born uh, about two years ago, so just as I was mm. kind of leaving, look after my bills. And I know at some point he's going to sort of ask me, you know, Dad, once you realise the extent of what we're doing to the planet, what did you do about it? Right. I yeah. Look him in the eye and say, I did all I could with the skills that I had. Yeah. Um, the second thing is, uh, when I was working on the social business, we interviewed a bunch of, of people of all ages. And the person who had the most sort of energy and lust for life was this 95 year old chap. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. And his secret was, uh, was to have purpose and his purpose was to help people. And so I kind of started to think, well, when I'm 95, what do I want to sort of look back on my life and say that I did? And for me, it's to have made a, a meaningful contribution to the planet, to have, mm -hmm. to have left the planet in a in a better state for for people and um and the kind of biodiversity that we share share this planet with. Yeah. And then the third reason is, uh, and this is kind of an an odd one, but I feel lucky to be on this earth right now at the point where humanity faces the biggest challenge it's ever faced. Like yeah. Some some generations. So, <laughs> some people feel quite unlucky about that, but you feel lucky, huh, Dan? <laughs> I feel empowered by it because, like, I love solving problems. Yeah. This is the biggest problem we're ever going to face. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. In, in <laughs> all of the years that humanity's been on this earth, this is the problem that we get to solve. And, you know, some generations get a war, some generations get nothing at all. We get the most important thing. We've and got I, something to fight for, yeah. Exactly. I'm totally in for doing whatever I can to help to help on that. That is that is a an absolutely brilliant way of looking at it. I, I, I think that's such a God, that's such an incredible backstory to to tee you up to be working on this. I I guess, you know, everyone says like starting a business about do you gotta Starting a business is always a longer journey than anyone thinks. And it, it's, um, 
there's a lot of ups and downs. And if you don't care deeply about it, then you're never going to get through those. And so it sounds like the foundations for what you're working on are, couldn't be stronger. Uh, it's it's absolutely amazing to hear the the reasons for getting into this. And um, yeah, I, I I I definitely feel inspired by that that motivation. I'm sure a lot of listeners will too. Um, so yeah, so I don't know. I don't feel like which way to tackle some of the things you talked about. But so with, with Mother Tree. I don't know how much I want to know this information. I feel like it's going to terrify me. Tell tell me more about where our money sits, why why this matters. Like you talked about the carbon calculator for our money, but what I, can you explain like a bit more about sort of the basics here of okay, my money sits in the Barclays or in NatWest or I don't know, I guess the American listeners, a Chase Chase I believe and and those 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 folks um what what does you know how's that affecting the environment like that's just my money sitting in an account isn't it yeah so let's take barclays so barclays invests 20 billion pounds into the fossil fuel industry every year wow uh chase 20 billion 20 20 billion billion. pounds per year wow that is a and just to sort of put that in perspective the banks in total have put in 50 times more financing than the into fossil fuel projects than the fossil fuel companies themselves. Wow. So the banks are driving the expansion of oil and gas. Now that is a huge lever that for us to pull. And anybody who's got an account with Chase or an account with Barclays or an account with any of the big banks, because they all invest in fossil fuel, has skin in this game. Mm-hmm. So we can do we can do two things. One is we can lobby our bank. Mm-hmm. to change we should and people like make my money matter in the uk are doing amazing uh lobbying efforts and i think if the bank isn't willing to step up and start actually funding the sources of energy that we need uh we don't need fossil fuels we need renewable sustainable sources we don't need new technology that already exists mm-hmm. um, but we need the financing to replace the old tech fossil fuel so if the bank's not doing that now, I would say switch. And that's what Mother Tree does. We highlight how much your money is contributing to those fossil fuel projects um, in, the, in the shape of carbon emissions. Uh, and we suggest banks that you can switch to who are greener and rule out any fossil fuel uh, investment. Wow. that I mean, I'm sure a lot of people will be quite opening their eyes at, at listening to that i know i certainly am i i i guess that, you know the same thing for consumers as businesses as well right like i guess when you think about the businesses that we all buy from or the bit maybe the businesses we run we also have you know <laughs> varying degrees of money sitting in bank accounts that is also having that same kind of consequence so it's not just consumers but businesses too right i i you know some uh, yeah it sort of it makes me wonder what some of the huge companies that uh, portray a very um a very friendly environmentally caring image actually where do they keep their money then it's it's sort of a begs a lot of questions actually when you start building back the layers there yeah and there's a really interesting report that um a chap called James Vaccaro and Paul Minister produced the name of the report is escaping me, but uh, that I'm sure we can showed... find it for the for the show notes. I'm sure that. <laughs> Thank you, that would be much appreciated. That report showed that for major companies such as Salesforce, Facebook, Apple, the money they hold in an, in their accounts contributes as much carbon as their entire supply chain. Wow, wow! So, so you're saying that you know. We, okay look at us we're doing a great job of our supply chain we're powering things with you know with we're we're trying to do our best but it's really hard but um comparatively the actual story is over where the where you wouldn't think not where the factories are the the production but it's where the money is sitting that's actually having the bigger consequence exactly and as with big companies it's the same with individuals so when you look at your pension and your bank account together for a UK yeah. average consumer it contributes about 10 tons and 
10 tonnes is the entire sort of lifestyle uh, emissions for a UK average consumer when you think about diet and transport and stuff. So it doubles, yeah. our, doubles our emissions. Um, That's phenomenal. That is phenomenal. Crikey. Wow. So, okay. So what can we do about that then? We So Mother Tree is helping solve this. So, you, so how do you, like, how do you find out even where to start on this? So go, I'm, I'm sure Mother Tree can help uh, with figuring, figuring a lot of this out, but how do you, how do you folks find out what the good banks are and the bad banks? How do you go and uh, figure this out? Yeah. So we look at, um, data sources that are publicly available and we use something called the Bloomberg terminal. So mm -hmm. publicly available sources, we look at what the banks already published. Uh, so that's sometimes through an organization called PCAF, um, but that's sometimes directly from the bank. Banks will publish their scope one and two emissions. Um, and most banks have started publishing some of their scope three. Um, scope three is where the biggest kind of emissions are because that's what they invested. And mm. uh, we then we then supplement that data with um, online reports. So things like uh, Banking on Climate Chaos, which done amazing work highlighting where Chase and Barclays are investing, um, as well as other big banks. We look at Greenpeace reports, South Pole data, uh, who are another data organization. Um, and then we use the Bloomberg terminal. So the Bloomberg terminal allows you to see it's a trading platform, but it allows you to see where banks are lending um, their money. Right. And so when they're lending it to carbon producing activities, we can, we know that. Um, and so what we're doing is we're building up a kind of what we think is a more comprehensive view of a bank's emissions, scope one, two, plus the investments through scope three. Um, uh, and then we look at your, the amount that you have in that account. So let's say you have a thousand pounds with Barclays and let's say Barclays have a um, uh, hundred thousand pounds in assets. Obviously it's a lot more, but if you've got <laughs> a thousand and they've got a hundred thousand, then that's, uh, I think that's 1%. So you don't have effectively 1% of Barclays and we say, okay, well that's 1% of their emissions. Got it. Got that's it. The, that's the calculation. What, what I, what I, would say here is um obviously the money you put into an account the bank will tell you well that's different to the money that we invest and it right. is those two aren't separate but what we say is it endorses a policy mm, that's the yeah. key link for me is is if you just like it endorses a policy when you buy yeah vegan food versus uh you know meat you're same. voting with your wallet in a way yeah yeah exactly you're voting with your current account yeah yeah wow i um that, that makes so so much sense as well it's it's making me think one of the first things i'm going to do after this call is uh is have a little look at uh where my money sits and have a little bit of a think of this where um you know i guess there's another aspect here where you know, at least in the UK, where we're going through some challenging times, like it's there's a real crisis on our hands, cost of living crisis, and uh, people are struggling with with making ends meet. How do how do you get people to think about this in the context of everything else? Because I guess you know some of these big banks lure people in with great rates and great offers and deals, like. Are those some of the challenges that you face at the moment with with like trying to build a business like this? Because I guess on some level, most people want to do the right thing for the environment. But sometimes as humans, we get persuaded by other factors and don't always make rational decisions. So what what are some of the challenges for, for you at the moment? If I could be as bold as to ask that, I, I know uh, I know we have a lot of other people who run businesses who listen to this and... Um, yeah, it's always fascinating just hearing the good and the and the challenging from uh, other business leaders and founders. Um, unless there are no challenges right now, Dan, which is totally fine. I understand. <laughs> well, it's quite a boring business if there were no challenges. Uh, and I suspect not a very successful one, unfortunately. There's always, there's always challenges. I think there's two things to your question. One is um, the kind of cost of living piece. And then one, what are the business challenges? So on the cost of living side, now... The more I've researched this, the more I've realized the idea of a green premium, the idea that you pay more to be green is a myth in many ways. Right. Let's take banking and then we'll take pensions. So banking, 
every year since Triodos have been in the UK market, Triodos are one of the greenest banks in terms of their carbon emissions and where they invest their money. Every year they've been in market, they've outperformed Barclays on interest rate. So actually by being with a greener bank, you can also make money. Uh, Nationwide is another good example. They're currently having a, they're giving £200 to people who open up a new account um, and they've got a competitive interest rate. Nationwide don't invest in fossil fuels. Uh, from what I can see, they're kind of the um, the lowest carbon emitting um, high street bank. Uh, mm. So, you know, there are ways to make money and be green here. Um, yeah. And on pensions, pension is really interesting. So for the last uh, five, six years and probably longer, um, green and ethical funds have outperformed the default fund. So, wow. you know, your company puts you into a default fund. You don't really think about it. Fine. But actually, just by asking your pension provider, you know, are there other options or asking a um, independent financial adv advisor, are there other, are there other ethical options? Yeah. Yeah. Not only is it good for the planet, it could actually, <laughs> it's not financial advice, but it could, <laughs> yeah. it could be good for, um, for your wallet as well. That's very uh positive and uplifting to hear that that actually yeah it's I, I guess on some level again not not a financial advice podcast just to clarify but it 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 makes sense from my perspective that you know a fund investing in more green and ethical options is going to hopefully continue to perform well as the general mindset of the population pays more attention to this spends more thinks more about this cares more um so hopefully that 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 all seems to make sense but it's very very reassuring to hear that you know it's easy to think there could be a big trade off there and a big added expense or cost to you as an individual for making better choices but actually often they they're quite aligned that's so that's good to hear <laughs> um yeah. it, it, i think that, and it's an important message we're kind of told that it costs more to go green but that's not always yeah. the case and then yeah. uh ask me about business challenges i think oh, oh yeah i <laughs> i think you said there weren't any no, oh no no, no. <laughs> there's, there's, there's always challenges so for me the the big challenge at the moment is um so we've got the mother tree website up and running yeah. um but what i want to really uh make happen is make it effortless for uk consumers to go green and save money on all life choices right so right we've identified 32 areas from banking to pensions but also from our diet to the clothes we wear where we can help people go green and save money mm. um, and so the the challenge that i'm i'm looking at right now is how do we make that as effortless as effortless as possible for mm. the consumer that's um, pretty pretty exciting i i uh yeah I, 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 what what's been your progress so far on that what are the what are the big hurdles in the way for people like i i uh i guess there's some smaller things people can change there's some bigger things people can change but any any the any areas where it's you're finding people are really struggle if finance is is, is one and it's huge but it yeah. doesn't take much to change and um that's why we set up the the climate challenge. Yes, uh, we're we're trialing ways to help people to make these to make these habit changes. And the climate challenge, um, five days, five actions. No action takes more than thirty days, and you go through it as a group. So there's a kind of community element to it. And we each day we take on um, one of the big changes we can make in terms of reducing our carbon footprint, creating a more positive world. Um, and we've been running it for over a year now. So we've really distilled those challenges <laughs> into the ones that really matter. And I would wow. say to your question, you know, what are people kind of uh, struggling to do? Well, one is just look at where your money is in terms of your bank. It doesn't take much. There are, you know, Mother Tree's one resource of many out there. Um, yeah. Bank.green is also a good one uh, to understand is your bank investing? And then, take a view on actually what's important to you from a bank perspective. And often, I mean, if you're like me, you'll have switched when you were a student for the rail card, right? Yeah. Oh, everyone, <laughs> everyone got the rail card. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and actually, what NatWest was providing me is probably a worse service than, uh, say, a Starling or a Monzo who invest less in fossil fuels. Yeah. So yeah. I, didn't, I sort of made that connection. I didn't say much. And to switch is actually pretty easy. You fill in a yeah. form, you switch all your direct debits, all your standing orders over. It's done. Um, yeah. takes seven days, but it's done. And and similar with pensions, it's, it's a higher bar with pensions in terms of to switch, but it doesn't actually take that much to figure out what's going on. Mm. Uh, just setting aside a little bit of time, um, but all the information is there. Uh, and so that's actually, why we find I was going to say on on pensions, it's actually a really interesting one because I think you know a lot of people don't don't care about their pensions in their at least in their the majority of their 20s at least people i sp have spent time with in my 20s myself included couldn't give a damn about their pension it's so far off thinking about that but maybe this and, and i think it's quite hard to get people to care about something is similar i guess to the wider climate uh, emergency of you know how do you get people to care about things that are quite uncertain and far in the future um but maybe Maybe this is actually a very big reason to care about your pension uh, in earlier on in life, where you think every single penny going into that is a penny of, uh, that is a vote for the kind of world I want to be living in when I'm I'm older. And maybe it's actually a, a bigger reason than ever to care about your pension, actually, uh, at an earlier age. Yeah, that's exactly right. I um, two things here. One is. Uh... I kind of I saw a program which said what kind of world you want to retire into and mm -hmm. really do have a choice it's you know do we retire into the kind of the world that we're on the default to get which is polluted air and polluted rivers and you know we can't go outside in the summer because it's 40 degrees plus <laughs> or do we do we retire into a world where yeah it, it is a hotter world but we can we can enjoy our summers and the air is clean and our rivers are clean and we can we can enjoy the the planet and that's not that far away you know that's mm. 30 40 years it's not i mean it can feel quite far in your 20s but it's not that far yeah and the way one of the big ways we can do that to make sure we have a a, a kind of a retirement we can enjoy is making sure our pensions going to the right place yeah. Um, but my second point is, you know, I, I totally went through this. I didn't think about my pension in my twenties, um, <laughs> but when I looked in my early thirties where it was invested, uh, it really woke me up. Like two percent of it was in uh, oil and gas, a percent was in um, mining. Uh, there was some in nuclear weapons, and this was just the default pension. Wow. I'm like, I don't support any of that stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Why would I, I would never I would never like choose to invest in one of those companies, and yet by default I'm giving them money every month. Yeah, that's Once incredible. Off, you know, I had to, had to change it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I um I feel like I feel like this has only been a very short time we've been chatting down, but I feel like I'm I'm like so motivated that I just want to get off the podcast and go change some things in my life now. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully our listeners might feel like that too um for anyone so if anyone has that urge right now to go do something about this i take it there's a few places you'd recommend and one of those would be the climate challenge site and and mother tree itself right those are two good ones <laughs> yeah definitely uh, it's mymothertree.com uh, and the climate challenge is is on the on the menu there um, awesome yeah, definitely. That would be great. Yeah, awesome. Well, well, that's great. I uh, and if anyone wants to keep up, up to date with you, Dan, is there anywhere they should go? Do you on LinkedIn or Twitter or just or head to the Climate Challenge site? Any any or the Mother Tree site or anywhere else they should find you? Yes, yeah, so uh, LinkedIn, Dan Sherrod yeah. Smith. Yeah. Um, or or email Dan at mymothertree dot com. Uh, awesome very happy to uh to chat <laughs> awesome dan it has been such a pleasure speaking with you uh today i genuinely feel so um it's rare that i feel so motivated to go and make some changes i feel guilty beyond belief about how, not paying more attention to some of these factors in my life so far um thank you so much for joining us and um 
thank you to everyone for uh, uh, listening to this this show as well. Uh, we it's great to be back with another series, and uh, if you are enjoying it, and if you've enjoyed this show in particular, do let us know, and uh, please give us a rating on whatever podcast player you are listening to uh, to this through, and uh, hopefully tell your friends as well and help them make some changes. It's a new year, uh, make make the world a bit of a bit better, and uh, thank you again, Dan. It's been a pleasure. And uh, hopefully catch you soon. Thanks for having me, James. Cheers.